sacrificing his whole family and himself uh, in the process. Um, I'm going to ask, uh, well, just, uh, I guess, and today is the 10th of Muharram, uh, and, you know, when Karbala happened, and Karbala is still happening, uh, in 61 Hijri, you know, we forget, you know, we just broke our fast and we ate and everybody's full. Uh, you know, Imam Hussein al-Islam and those with him had not eaten, eaten anything from the 8th of Muharram forward. So the 8th, the 9th, and then the 10th. And of course, you know, the men were martyred. But afterwards, the women were shackled and drugged through the streets of Kufa and then eventually to Damascus, you know, like prisoners of war. But they also hadn't eaten anything. And even as they're being shackled and taken to Kufa, they still haven't eaten or drank anything. And we forget this. 
you know, because our stomachs are full, so we think, oh, everybody's fine. Uh, but this is a sacrifice given by the family of Rasulullah so that the deen or the religion through which we can attain salvation came to us. So uh, I'm going to ask uh, Jafar to recite a very short uh, few couplets and then uh, then uh, inshallah I'll talk a little bit. Assalamu alaikum. Everybody please recite the receipt. His clothing is all marked and worn, is covered in, to, in dust and torn, cuts and wounds from head to toe, covered this angelic form. Who is this most honored one? A warrior like whom is none? Who is this most honored one? A warrior like whom is none? Standing far before a thousand killers with their weapons drawn. Certainly it is Hussein, he is the Prophet's Nurain. It is Hussein, it is Hussein, he is the Prophet's Nurain. The only one so brave and bold, a hero with the heart of gold. The enemies are turning pale, his awesomeness when they behold. Loved by Mustafa is he, a lion of Allah is he. Loved by Mustafa is he, a lion of Allah is he, and so before him you will see the army bite the dust and fold. Certainly it is Hussein, he is the Prophet's no rain. It is Hussein, it is Hussein, he is the Prophet's no rain. Yeah, I don't think I need to translate that one. <laughs> And for those who are still eating or drinking, uh, you know, while you're doing that, I just need your focus here in Shabu. Um, you know, again, you know, listening to the speaker attentively is not to honor the speaker. It's, the, it's to honor the one that he is speaking about. And so, uh, you know, and the one who is being spoken about today is the grandson, the beloved grandson of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, and so, you know, I'm going to ask everybody, you know, to be quiet. No talking, no texting, no playing with the phone. Uh, and just, uh, you know, again, this... Imam Hussein Islam, of course, he deserves much more than anything that we can do for him, any honor that we can give him, you know, but uh, we should do our best uh, with what we can. And so, inshallah, uh, we'll get started. Nahmaduhu nasalli ala rasul nabi al kareem أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين أحدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قال الله تعالى في شان حبيبي إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم بارك على سيدنا مولانا محمد طب القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها ونور الأبصار وديائها وعلى آله وصحبه دائما أبدا صلاة وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. Now I'm going to ask people again just to be quiet and listen. 
Uh, and this is a small place, so voices travel. Uh, and again, you know, the purpose of us coming here is to learn about Imam Hussein al Islam, which is hard to do when people are talking to each other. Uh, you know, Karbala did not begin when Imam Hussein al Islam stepped foot in the field of Karbala, nor did it end you know, when he was martyred in that same field. You know, Karbala has been going on from the beginning of time and will continue on until the end of time. You know, because Karbala in reality is, the, is that fight. You know, it's the struggle between haq and batin, between the truth and falsehood. It is the struggle between iman and kufr. You know, the struggle between faith and disbelief. <laughs> Imam Hussein al-Islam is the perfect personification of all of the aspects of truth and all of the aspects of iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, addressing Rasulullah so he says, Wa idh qala rabbuka lil malaikati inni ja'ilum fil arudi khalifa. You know, when he's about to create Adam alayhi salam, he says to Rasulullah so he says, And remember, when your Lord said to the angels that I am about to create a vice chairant or a representative of mine on the earth, Adam al-Islam is Khalifatullah fil ard. He is the Khalifa, the representative of Allah on the earth. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is Khalifatullah fil alameen. He is the Khalifa of Allah, the representative of Allah to all of creation. We of course are the progeny of Adam al-Islam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has above that given us the gift of being the ummati, the followers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The representative of someone, you know, the representative of a king exemplifies the qualities of the king. He is an extension of the qualities of the king. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Baqarah again, he says, Sibghat Allah wa ahsanu min Allah is sibgha. He orders us, he says, adopt the colors of Allah and whose color is better than the color of Allah. And of course here color doesn't mean black, white, yellow, green or anything like that. It's talking about the characteristics of Allah. And when we as believers, when we think about the characteristics of Allah, the first thing that comes to our mind is Rahman or Rahim. You know, it's His mercy. But after that, we think about His justice. And so whoever is His true vice chair and His true representative is going to be an extension of His justice as well as His mercy. In, you know, we have this, and Islam, Rasulullah he says that Islam is peace. It is to spread peace. And when we meet each other, what do we say? We say, Assalamu Alaikum, peace be upon you. Rasulullah said, extend the peace. <coughs> Unfortunately, you know, these days we become delusional. You know, because the West has put this ideology of peace into our minds that is un-Islamic. You know, of course, you know, I like one definition of peace and everybody has their own definitions. One is that peace is the time in history when mankind stops to reload. You know, because there's never real true peace. The struggle between truth and falsehood never ends. You know, it's a continuous struggle. 
Peace that the delusion that we've been given is that oh, you know, you have a peaceful life, you know, when you're when you're just comfortable. You're not worried about anything. Nothing going on. And you're sitting back and relaxing. You know, this is Disney World peace. You know, it makes you lazy. You don't do anything. You just sit back and, oh, you know, my life is supposed to be peaceful, so I should eat on time and I should sleep on time, and that's the extent of my life. Islam is peace. It's real peace. And for a true believer, peace is being in the condition where Allah and His Messenger are pleased with you. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is true peace. In whatever condition you are, you are always in a condition of the pleasure of Allah and His Messenger. This is true peace, which we have lost. But in order to attain that peace, there is a process. Because again, Islam is peace, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? In a Surah An-Kabut, Surah number 29, right at the beginning, right after Alif Lam Mim, he says, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Raheem, Ahasab al-Nas wa in yutraku wa in yakulu amanna, Ahasab al-Nas wa in yutraku wa yakulu amanna, that do they think hmm? that they can simply say that we believe and then you won't be tested that do, does mankind think that they can uh, that all they have to do is say oh we believe and that's it and then they won't be tested hmm? and then the ne very next verse verse number three you know he says that we tested those before you And he says that we will test uh, that uh, you know we've tested that we will test you so as to show we tested those before you so as to show who which one of you is truthful and which one of you are liars. Allah already knows who's truthful and who's lying. He doesn't say that I'm doing this to find out who's lying and who's truthful. He says to show, to demonstrate. And this is why, you know, whenever the, the children of Adam, Adam al Islam do anything good, he always says to the angels, see, you objected to their creation, now look at them. So the purpose, in order to attain peace, you have to first believe. And if you claim to believe, then the next step is that you will be tested. But he also tells us what we will be tested with. Surah Baqarah. You know, if you started, when we started, we started with the recitation of these verses. Starting from verse 152, actually 153 and then forward. And then 155, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, al khawfi wal وَنَقْسِمْ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ And you shall tr truly be tested or surely be tested with something of خوف, fear Jew, hunger your wealth and what? أَنفُس, your, yourselves, your lives what thamarat, your, the fruits of your toils, the children, your, your offspring. Mm -hmm. And then he says, وَبَشِّرِ you السَّابِرِينَ know, And glad tidings to those who are patient. Uh, because, the, because the verse before this, he says what? He says, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرُكُمْ وَلَا وَشْكُرُونِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ That remember me and I will remember you and, do, and be thankful or grateful to me and do not do disbelief or do not be of the disbelievers. Huh? Meaning that if you're ungrateful, then you have fallen into disbelief. So when the test comes, you are grateful to him, even in the condition of the test. Otherwise, you've fallen into disbelief. And when we look at this verse, 
verse 155, the only place in history where all of these conditions are met at one time is in the field of Karbala. And the only one to exemplify how to deal with all of these conditions all at the same time is Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Again, the purpose of the representative of Allah is to fight against oppression. You know, this is just part of justice, is to fight against oppression. You know, we fall into this trap that we say, oh, Allah loves everybody. You know, that's partially true. You know, he tells us in the Quran, he loves the muhsineen, the doers of good, he loves these, he loves those. He also tells us in the Quran, Wallahu la yuhibbu dhalameen. And Allah does not love those who are violent, oppressors. In Arabic, dhulm. The word dhulm, if you look at a technical definition of, of dhulm, it means to displace something. To put something out of place. So technically, if I take my cap and put it on my feet, I've oppressed I've done oppression. But if I take my socks and put it on my head, I've committed oppression. The worst oppression is to take, or the worst forms of oppression. You know, this is why shirk and kufr are oppression, are dhulm. Because I'm taking the rights of Allah and His Messenger and displacing them. So if I take the honor and the respect that should be shown to Allah and show it to some, some idol, you know, if I worship something other than Allah, this is dhulm. This is the worst of oppression. This is shirk. If I take the honor and the respect that is due to Rasulullah and I don't show him that honor and I don't respect him as I should, irregardless if I do it to anybody else or not, but if I don't do it to him, then again, this is dhulm. This is oppression. These are oppressions against our own souls. Of course, you know, you have oppression where one person oppresses somebody else. Maybe that person has some authority or no authority. But now you get somebody who's a position of authority, and now he oppresses somebody. That's a worse form, or that's a more uh, aggressive form of oppression. Because now the one who's being oppressed has less power to defend himself. You know, like if a police comes and oppresses somebody, then it's harder for the person defending, you know, being oppressed to defend himself. When the state becomes the oppressor. And again, you know, oppression, you have the physical form of oppression, which is what we think about commonly. Oh, that's the only thing, that's in fact, the only thing we think about, unfortunately. Because we was always, we're always worried about our stomachs. Oh, I didn't get enough to eat. You know, I'm oppressed. You know, somebody hit me, so I'm oppressed. These oppressions end. At one time or another, they will come to an end. You know, and if the ultimate happens, if I die, well, all that oppression is gone now. But the oppression of the soul never ends. You know, if my soul is oppressed, you know, because I'm not honoring Rasulullah so and the ones that he loves. That oppression does not end when I die. That oppression goes to me with my, into my grave, follows me in the hereafter, and literally takes me to the fire. And so when you have a state that has developed, you know, I'm not talking about a state or an environment, but a, but a state as a government that has developed, and now it is oppressing the people to this extent, 
in the disguise of Islam causing the people to go away from the true love of Allah and his messenger وسلم, and the ones that he loves this is an oppression that a person that is being oppressed doesn't even realize he's being oppressed until it's too late because when he's dead then he will know what happened but by that time it doesn't matter or rather it does matter but he has he can't do anything about it so when we look at the time of Imam Hussein السلام, and we see Yazid becoming the king you know it's one thing that he's a drunkard a womanizer, other worse things that I won't mention. But it's another thing when he has the whole state behind him. You know, when Imam Hussein al-Islam is in the field of Karbala, you know, of the 22,000 soldiers that came against him, 500 of them are Qadi. They're judges. I mean, they are scholars to the extent that they are judges. Thousands of them are Hafidh of Quran. Other just normal scholars. In fact, amongst them you have people that are in the narrations of Hadith. The one who killed Imam Hussein and Islam Shimr. Now, this is a man who was in the, in the masjid for Salat five times a day, who used to lead the Fajr Salat. So you have this exoskeleton of Islam that exists, you know, the trappings. You know, people are going through the motions. But the heart of Islam is already dead. And this is the whole purpose of Imam Hussein and Islam doing what he did. You know, when we look at Imam Hussein and Islam, we see the purity of intention. Purity of action. Unwavering in his determination. You know, this is a path that when anybody comes on this path, then he needs to be ready to be alone. Because when you come on this path, then all of your friends leave you. To the extent that even your family leaves you. And for someone from the outside looking in, you know, he looks at this like, oh, this man is truly lonely. But again, the reality is that he's at peace. Because he's in the condition of the pleasure of Allah and his messenger. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so now you, uh, his, all of his friends you don't see. The support he has, we don't understand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam You know he says Addressing the believers Ya ayu ladina amanu In tansuru Allah yansurukum Wa yuthabbit aqadamakum That oh you who believe Help Allah And Allah will help you Of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need any help Allah is Allah. He is as samad He is free from all needs. So what does this mean to help him? It means to help his deen, the mission. The mission with which his beloved وسلم, brought. To stand up against oppression in all of its forms. But he says, help Allah and Allah will help you. Mm -hmm. And he says, وَيُثَبِّتْ أَقْدَامَكُمْ 
course, most people, they translate that. And he will plant your feet firm. <coughs> but in reality, he's explaining to us how he will help us. That if we help his cause, if we take this path, and we are, you know, we are pure in our intention on this path. Because Allah is pure and accepts only that which is pure. So if we are pure in our intention on this path, then he says, well, you thabbit aqdamakum. I will make your feet firm. Nothing sh can shake you. Nothing can move you away from your mission, you know, from your purpose. The purpose again is to be the vice chair of Allah, the representative of Allah, to stand up against those things which are against Allah. <coughs> Which in reality means those things which are against the household of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This when Rasulullah Sallam said that I'm leaving two very heavy things behind. What did he say? He said the Quran and my itrati. Itra, my itra, my family. And what did he say after that? He says that these two will always be together until they meet me at the Hawd. Doesn't mean they'll separate then, but they will come and meet him together at the Hawd <coughs> on the Day of Judgment. They are inseparable. You cannot understand the Quran with that without understanding the household of Rasulullah. <coughs> and you cannot understand the household of Rasulullah without knowing the Quran. And if you try to separate them, then it's nothing but misguidance. Imam Hussein al-Islam, you know, as was described earlier, you know, if you look at him, the bottom half of his body was a mirror image of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And this is why, when we see him in the field of Karbala, we see him how firmly he is planted, and yielding to the enemy to fulfill his mission, to safeguard the religion. Rather, to give life to the religion that his grandfather brought by giving his own blood and the blood of his whole family for this purpose. And as I said, purity of intention, purity of action. You know, when he leaves, and you know, the thing is, anyone who comes on this path, they are following his example. But there are many speed bumps along the way. And you start and then something happens. And then, you know, it's easy to falter, go one way or the other. You know, Imam Hussein al-Islam, when he's leaving Mecca, you know, he meets Farazdaq, you know, who's a poet, who's coming from Kufa. And he asks Farazdaq, he says, what is the condition of the people of Kufa? And he says that their swords, their, their, their hearts are with you, but their swords are with Banu Umayyah. You know, you could have abandoned the mission then. Then on the way, news comes that Muhammad, Muslim bin Aqil, his cousin whom he had sent to Kufa, to whom 40,000 people had given allegiance to, well, had been martyred. Now, the interesting thing is when he went in front of the court of, of Ibn Ziyad, all of these thousands of people are following him saying, we support you. And then when he turns around, there's no one there. Now again, this is a very lonely path. You know, if you, this is a path for those who are, willing, who are willing to give up everything for the pleasure of Allah and His Messenger. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. To be at true peace. So he receives the news that his cousin has been martyred. And still, he moves forward. The initial army that Yazid sends, a thousand men, under Hur, he sees them coming. Again, he could have turned around and gone back. He moves forward. He arrives in Karbala. 
they say, you know, he offers them ways out. They reject everything. They, you know, they say the only way is to give Bayar allegiance to Yazid. He could have done that. He could say, yeah, I'll give allegiance today and then I'll go back on it tomorrow. But this is the grandson of Rasulullah, the leader of the, of the youth of Jannah. He is the example to the world. Not just to the world, but to the universe. You know, the example of that perfect submission to his Lord. Perfect intention. Perfect action. Standing up against oppression. And again, not for anything for himself. There is no ego. There is no worldly ambition. Nothing for himself. Nothing for even his family. Only to safeguard this religion so that it can arrive to the Ummah later on in its purest form. So that we have the opportunity to know what Islam truly is and what peace truly is. Because Imam Hussein al Islam, through all of this, he is at peace. You know, we, we look at the, his example when he goes before the army as the army is growing. You know, it starts off with a thousand and eventually ends up to 22,000. And he goes before them every day. Try telling them who he is. Don't make this mistake. Don't buy hell. You know, simply because your king orders you to. Every day he goes before them. Because on the day of judgment he also wants to be sure that no one can say though we didn't know who this was we didn't know what we were doing that night I mean calmly it's not like he's afraid of anything he calmly goes before them addresses them Even when the fighting begins on the 10th of Muharram, you know, and fam you know, initially the friends go and they're all martyred. And then the family one by one goes. And they are martyred one by one. And he goes and he picks the bodies up and he brings them back to the tent. In the end, he's, he's, hand he's holding his six-month-old son, Ali Aswar in his hand and he says that you know what do you have against him at least give him some water he knows they won't they shoot the arrow through his neck the blood stains his beard comes back this was the only one that he buried the rest of them he simply brought back but he buries him There is no anger. There is no ego. Even after this, he addresses them again. Telling them that, look, you know who I am. You know, change your course and I will forgive you all. Standing up against oppression with mercy. You know, his sons have been killed. And he's still ready to forgive them. 
is change your course. Change your path and come to the true path and as if nothing happened. You know, anyone who can read or hear about Karbala without shedding a tear has no heart. You know, I would say that there are dogs today, but, you know, then on the Day of Judgment, the dogs might complain against me that you associated me with such creatures. But there are, and I can't say people either, but there are something, you know, that, that, you know, they shoot off at the mouth and they say, oh, you know, crying over Karbala, this is haram. And they say, oh, you know, the uh, grief mourning in Islam is only for three days. So how many years has it been since Karbala? You know, when the hadith is in Tirmizi, it's a say hadith, even according to Nasiruddin Albani, uh, one of the muhaddis of the modern-day Salafis. You know, he says that this hadith is say. Angel came with Jibreel al-Islam who had never come to the earth before. It was the angel of rain. He came to meet Rasulullah Wasallam. And when he came to meet Rasulullah Wasallam, Rasulullah Wasallam was in the house of Umm Salma radiallahu anha, his wife. And he told her, he said that this angel has come we should not be disturbed, no one can enter the house. So she goes and stands guard at the door. Imam Hussein al-Islam, who's you know, just a few years old, maybe three, four, five, five years old, he comes. She says, she tries to stop him. She says, Rasulullah said, no one can enter. He says, this is my grandfather's house. He enters. The angel looks at him and he says, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi do you love him? The Rasulullah says, of course I love him. And he says that a time will come when people from your ummah will massacre him. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's crying as he's listening to the details of the massacre. And the angel, he says that I will bring you the dirt from the place that he will be martyred. And he brings the, 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 the dust from Karbala and gives it to Rasulullah Sallallahu Who gives it to his wife, Umm Salma, who at that time is one of the oldest wives, if not the oldest wife. Which is interesting that he gives it to her because he doesn't give it to the younger ones. He doesn't even give it to Bibi Fatima salamu alayha, who was the youngest of, uh, of the women. Mm-hmm. Because all of them passed away before Karbala. This was the only wife of Rasulullah who was alive at the time of Karbala. He says that when this turns to blood, they will have martyred my grandson. But when he's listening to this, he's crying. So crying over Imam Hussein al-Islam and the martyrs of Karbala, this is not, this is not re, uh, mourning. This is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And anyone who has an issue with the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you know, anyone who rejects the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he has nothing to do with Islam. <coughs> I said I wouldn't talk very long today. The points that I want to make, you know, I've pretty much made them for those who who understand. But again, when we look at Imam Hussein and Islam, and you know, we could (coughs) we could talk about this on and on. But when we
we look at him, we need to understand that he is our example. He is the perfect example. For the purpose of our coming here, I mean, not here, the center, but I mean the purpose of our coming into this world. And what our mission coming here is. And what we need to do to fulfill that mission. You know, because again, this is all a test. And if we don't, you know, and fulfilling the mission is to fulfill the test. If we go back without fulfilling, finishing the mission and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala questions us then what answers will we give? No. But at the beginning you know I said that Karbala did not begin when Imam Hussein al Islam stepped foot in Karbala. It's been ongoing from the beginning. And Karbala did not end with Imam Hussein al -Islam. You know, In fact, even at that point, after they had martyred him, and they took all of the heads and they put them on the spears and they paraded them. <coughs> they paraded them through the streets of Kufa and then the streets of Damascus. And as the head of Imam Hussein al -Islam is passing by a masjid, where the where a Qari is reciting Suraka and he recites Am Hasibta an nah an an Am Am Hasibta an Nahil Am Hasibta an Ashab al Kahf wa Rakim Qanu min Ayatina Ajaba. And do you think that this story of this of the people of the cave is something strange, unusual? And from there he responds, and everyone heard him. No, no, passion, no. Mm -hmm. no he responds saying that, oh, do you think that the peop the, the, uh, that uh, that is strange? My story is even stranger than that, is even more strange than that. Mm -hmm. You know, because people of the cave, you know, they were trying to practice their religion. But what did they do when the, when the oppressive king came they ran away to hide themselves and what does Imam Hussein -Islam do he doesn't run away he answers the the oppressor by moving forward by not moving back by planting his feet firm. I will end here, inshallah. Uh, you know, again, there are many things and we need to learn a lot of things. You know, for those who are coming to Juma, I am going over this a little bit more detailed. Right now, I'm still in the background. Uh, but, uh, and I mean, this is something that we could gather here, you know, every night for ever and never really complete the topic. Uh, again, you know, we need to look at his life and we need to make sure that we understand that he is our example. He is our model for how we need to do things. You know, we need to get rid of these concepts that we have been given by the West by give, but have been given by those who have infiltrated the religion, posing themselves as sheikh this and sheikh that, and all they do is they shake, shake they shake our iman out. So may Allah subhanahu wa taala guide us, make us truly understand the life of Imam Hussein al-Islam and the purpose of Imam Hussein al-Islam and, and why he sacrificed all of this. I mean, you know, he's doing everything he does knowing what's going to happen. Nothing he did, he didn't know what would happen. He knew exactly what was going to happen, yet he still did what he did, again, to give life to Islam. You know, after every Karbala, Islam is born again. It's revived. 
So if we look at all of these revolutions that came from Karbala itself directly, every revolution that has come, you know, fighting oppression has in some way been connected to Karbala. Every revolution. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again allow us to understand and fill our hearts with His true love. The true love of His beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, His family, His companions and all of those whom they love inshallah. Salam <laughs> قال الله تعالى في شان حبيب في القرآن المجيد والقرآن الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله ملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا يسلوا ولا يسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا وعلى آله محمد وعلى آله سيدنا وعلى آله محمد وعلى آله سيدنا I'm going to take one of the part of our faith which is very much disputed among the Muslims. And I, I have put some effort into this to make it clear to myself and to you. And if you understand, I'll feel that I got the reward for my effort, inshallah ta'ala. Islam is very simple. Worship Allah and honor and dignify Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and all those who are the true one, true saints of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. But due to the internal problems and also the external, but when you have the problem, internal problem here. That is very hard to solve, you know. And this has been going on through, uh, throughout our history. Even today, there are people who try to Allah says, honor and dignify your prophet in the Quran. But they try to bring him down, his family, his companions, all this is all going on. I will so it's a kind of a class type thing, you know. And I want you to be interacting. Now, those who have cell, cell phones and those who have Quran in it, please take out uh, verse number 15 of chapter 5. So, and then we it will read with me. Um, the topic is. Is Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi reality nur or that of a human being? How many of you can prove that he is nur with certainty? If someone dis discusses with you and disputes with you, no, he is a human being, then your job will be to show him that, no, his reality, reality is nur. How many of you can do that? With certainty. That means bring him down. Did you take the, out the verse, verse number 15, chapter 5? This is the verse. All the line of Shaitan Rajeem. Ya Ahl al Kitab, Kajakum Rasulunna. 
کہ بھائیوں لکم کثیر میں ماں قدم تو خون ہے میرے کتاب وہ یافو ان کثیر قجا قب من اللہ نور و کتاب مبین سو لک ایٹ دس ورس اینڈ سی دیٹ اٹ ہیز ٹو پارٹس ہم نے فسٹ پارٹ از یاد کتاب کجا قم رسول نہ بھائی بھائی ان لکم کثیر میں ماں قدم تم تو فون ہے میرے کتاب وہ یافو ان کثیر اینڈ دی سیکنڈ پارٹ از قجا قم من اللہ نور و کتاب مبین سو دی سیکنڈ پارٹ از ایکچولی the concise form of the first part you see that here now now can you see so ya ahal al kitab ya means o you ahal al kitab the owner of the book that means bible and قد جاءكم رسولنا فالشيور قد من انفاتك فالشيور اور رسول ادنا سي رسولي that my رسول has come to you and in رسولنا it means that he is the رسول for every creation of Allah سبحانه وتعالى that Allah تعالى is including all this creation along with him to give you that news when he uses the word na we or our our rasul has come not my rasul has come so that means he is the rasul of everyone if you jibreel name anything you know and he the stones rocks trees he is the rasul for everybody everyone now you get it so far so good Okay. Uh, so the first part, or the first in first part, the first item of that part is Rasulna. What is that? He says, "Kajakum, for sure has come." What? Rasulna. Doing what? So talking to Jews and Christians, they used to change their book, you know. And they used to hide some. They will not tell the truth to the people, you know. And the uh, people were not allowed to even read Bible and Torah. Only rabbi or preacher could explain. That, that, that's it. So whatever they wanted to tell, you know, they told and they were hiding some. And so professor, so this, this prophet, our prophet, he does not only know the Quran, but also the Torah and all the previous books. Is it not the, is it not the Ilm al-Ghayr? The Torah, he, he did not bring Torah, did he? He did not bring Angel, Angel, but he knew everything in that, you know. So what a knowledge of Prophet. So Rasulullah, Yubayyun uh, alakum makes you clear, or tells you, Kasirum, most of it, Mimma, that, Kuntum yu tukfuna, to you to hide. So he tells you what you, what you used to hide from your book. This is the thing you are hiding. This is. And then also says, Melkrav, Yafu and Kasir, and then he ignores most of it for you. So two things which are mentioned in the first part are Rasulna and their book. Melkrav, see that? رسولنا and then كتاب ٹھیک ہے اوکے تو دس از دی فرسٹ فرسٹ پارٹ ناؤ ہی سمرائزز لسما ہی سیز قد جاءت رسولنا او قد جاءت من اللہ نورا و کتاب مبین فور شیور فرام اللہ ہیز کم دی نور اینڈ دی کلیئر بک یو نو دس بک از سچ دیٹ دے ول ناٹ نو ون ول بی ایبل ٹو ہائڈ اینی تھنگ Because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala Himself in Quran says, "Nahnu nazzal nazzikra, wa inna lahul hafizun." I have revealed the zikr, that means this kitab, and I am going to protect it. So when Allah protects, you know, a lot of people say, you know, some parah or some Jews were taken away or this and that. That means they are 
belying the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, I'm going to be half of this, I'm going to be protector. How can anyone take any even a dart from this book? And for 1400 years, no one has been able to take any dart from the Quran. The same type. Now, so, Qad jaakum min Allah hai Noor, first, the first item of the second part is Noor. And the second part is O Kitabu Mubin. First part of the first part, first part of the first part is Rasuluna. And the second part of the first part is Kitab. Many times when uh, people, you know, other people, they try to discuss with uh, the uh, scholars of our type, they present only Kajak Mila Nurum Kitab Mubin and they say Nur is Rasul and Kitab is Kitab. But the other guys they say, no, no, Nur is, a, Nur is also Kitab, or Kitab is also Kitab. So let's an analyze that part first. No. I'm pretty sure a lot of you who are educated here, they have gone through some mathematical logic, right? When you are trying to connect two parts of a sentence, there are two things you can use, wa and or au in Arabic, which is ya, or ya, ya, in Urdu. So when you use the conjunction and, like kajjaat min Allah hai, noor hau, wa kitab mubin, so that means you are connecting the noor and kitab. Now, Noor is Noor, okay, we don't know what Noor is right now, so let's leave it as it is. But Kitab is the Kitab, Quran, you know, right? So, in logic, mathematical logic, we have conjunction, then first part must be true and second part must be true. Both parts must be true to make the whole sentence true. Otherwise, this whole sentence will go away, right? Because, like, uh, all they say, uh, Hassan and uh, Abdullah, I. That means Hassan, Aya, and Abdullah, we Aya. If one Aya, then the Jumla is wrong. If one Aya is wrong, then you understand? So, so this part to be true, Noor and Kitab. And now, they must have come. That's why Allah says, Qadjaat min Allah, Noor on. Kitabum we know has come and Kitab has come. Now can they be same? They have to be distinct. They have to be different. <coughs> Noor cannot be Kitab and Kitab cannot be Noor. Otherwise the sentence will be wrong. See? So Noor has something else. It is not Kitab for sure. According to mathematical logic, it is not it is Kitab and Noor are not same. Otherwise, you will say, uh, Kareem and Rahim, Kareem, uh, uh, Kareem or Kareem, I, you know, Kareem and Rahim, Kareem and Kareem came. Will that be right? Same thing. Will that be right? You have to say, Kareem and Rahim, I. Kareem and Rahim came. They have to be different. So, the book and Noor have to be different or not? I'll answer that. They have to be different. So the saying of the other party is saying that Noor uh, is also Kitab and Kitab is also Kitab, you know. Will that be right? The whole thing will be wrong, you know. That means, now if you don't understand the logic, maybe simple language, English language, and in English, simple language you say, former and later. The awal, awal is zikr and akhru is zikr. The first and the second. So, if the first part, the first and second are, the first is Rasulna. See that? The first is Rasulna. The second is Kitab. And the second part, which is the kind of summary of the first part, Noor matches with Noor matches with Rasul. And Kitab matches with Kitab. This Kitab is Quran and that, that this Kitab is Bible art, Torah, you know. 
You understand? So, either way, the soul is moved from this verse. Any doubt? Hmm? Is that clear? So this verse, you know, we have to use the whole verse to make people understand either this way or that way. If you use mathematical logic, the second part is enough to explain. But if you don't know the mathematical logic and use the, use the common language, then you have to use the, both the two parts to make your point, you know. Now, if I say, engines are moved, is there any shift? I say, uh, Arsh is no shift. Allah is no, up, up, no doubt. If I say Kitab is no, and doubt, Kitab is not kind of uh, uh, Allah. Kitab is uh, uh, Allah's part anyway. Kalam is Kalam, Kalamullah. So that's another topic, you know. Now, so wh what do you say now? Is the soul nur or not? About angels, they are made from nur. I know that they say, Farishtay nur se paida hai, khate hai na peete hai, khuda ka zikr karte hai, isi se wo jeete hai. If an angel stops making zikr of Allah, that is death, you know, that is death for him. Gone, finished. So, that's their, you know, food. The zikr lai is their food. So, they are Noor. Jibreel al Islam is Noor. But if you want to compare the Noor of Jibreel, which is the Noor of Prophet Muhammad himself, you have to look at Siddhar al Muntaha. What happened on the, on the Ascension night? He stopped at Siddhar Muntaha and Kaika. He is you know, very kind of uh, respectable angel, an honorable angel. But he stops at Siddhar Muntan and says, I can't go. And who goes after that? Now, there are, so, uh, who came uh, to Mariam alayhi salam to give the news of Isa alayhi salam? What form? Basharan huh? Saviya, perfect human being. And you always came to the angels in that form. Did anyone say that is he is human being? Did anyone use that word for him? He, no, for hundreds of years he kept coming. He, for the, the Isa al Islam he used to stay most of the time. The believe al Islam. But no, in the form of human being, no one said that he is human. But when it comes to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, oh no. The two, da two daughters of us, uh, Prophet Sallallahu when they were married, they were given in the uh, marriage of Usman Sallallahu His title, the com companions that they gave that title, Zub Nuran, the holder of two Nurs. Zub Nuran, Zub means two Nurs. So, uh, baby Rukhaya and baby Kulsum. Uh, Two. That means their daughter was Noor, their daughters were Noor, that's why they, he is called Zun Nuran. What, what happened to Devandi? They did not speak, speak that time. They, they should have told the companion that you are doing shit. But no one stood up. Was there any Devandi that time? Huh? No? So where did they come from? They won about 200 years ago or something like that, less than that. And the Badal. But my deen is not, is neither from Devan, not from Bareilly. My deen is from Medina, Makkah, Medina. My deen is from Makkah, Medina. If they are in line with that Islam, which was practiced by prophets, by the companions of Prophet, I am with them. So you have to read and understand Quran because if you don't read Quran, uh, you get nothing. You will be confused. Uh, somebody is saying this nonsense, some of the other is saying this. So take, you know, Allah, Allah has not sent us 
as a Christian, or a Jew, that you should follow your rabbi or something. Allah has sent us as Muslims, which means who, who, uh, who were told that if you have to learn, then go, uh, if, we have, if, we have, if we have to go to China, go to China and learn then. You know. So we have to learn then. You know. Now, a few things, uh, I would just uh, maybe take uh, 10 more minutes, inshallah. If you read carefully and learn about different sects, you know, and India and Pakistan, they are two major ones. They won the end. What are you? Right? If you collect the kind of Akhira part or articles from the B both these, they want to say that how can I cover that? The, one of them is, they say, that Allah can tell a lie. That Allah can take, tell a lie. What, was, what is your idea? In Allah, Allah is capable of doing anything. So can you tell a lie? Why not? We have to prove it from Quran. Quran says, Whatever it says is truth. Is there any possibility left hand now that he can tell a lie? Any possibility left? Whatever he says. He says it's day. We say it's night. He says, no, no, it is day. What, what do you have to do? Accept it. Now, he has the power uh, to keep his Prophet's innocent. You know, read in Surah Yusuf. When the brothers came and they wanted, he wanted to keep the Binyabin, the his brother with him, what he did? He put the magic cup in the sack of his brother, that one. And he accused false accusation. And he said, you are thieves. A prophet, Jayat prophet, great prophet like Yusuf Allah. And he is uh, uh, making false accusations against his brothers. Is that a sin? And committed by a prophet? It's a big sin. Of course it is sin. What do you say? Can you protect him? Huh? He did that. I'm telling you. But Allah says, I taught this trick to Yusuf. So he protected the innocence of his prophet. Now say anything to Allah, go and say that now. He said, I did this. I I taught in this trick. Okay? So what, what, what you can say now? So he's innocent. And Allah is one according to Quran, Kefalullah my shaw. He does whatever he wants. He cannot question. And I also say verse in the, that you are going to be questioned. But no one can question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See? Now, Adam alayhi salam. Allah said, do not go near this tree. And he ate the food from that. The, all the angels, every leaf in the paradise was saying, Asa Adam Rabbahu. Adam has committed sin against Allah. Asa Adam Rabbahu from every leaf of the tree. It was coming, the sound was coming, it was such a great sin against Allah. No, no other sin was committed by the, up to that time. So is he a sinner? Allah, Prophet said, all the Ambiya are masum. They are sinless. So how to protect him now? You tell me. So if you can't listen, uh, in Surah Taha, Surah number 20, Allah says, وَلَقَدْ أَحِذْنَا إِلَىٰ آدْمَ مِنْ قَبْلِ I took the oath from the Adam before this, Panasya, he forgot. Uh, look at the kind of 
uh, love part, you know, for Adam al -Islam. He says, <laughs> when I read this, I, I, I can't help laughing either. I, I enjoy this verse. He said, Before this, I took the allegiance or oath that he will not eat from this tree. Panacea. He forgot. And what he says after that? Walam najid lahu azamah. And I did not find any intention against me in, in him, you know. There was no, no intention for disobedience for me in Adam alayhi salam. Walam najid lahu azamah. He has no intention to. So what do you say about Adam now? Is he innocent or sinner? Innocent. Same thing, you know, same way, you know, like, uh, uh, same, you know, all the... Now, this year, that group says that people, Prophet did not even know what was on the other side of the wall. Right? Did they say that? He did not have any knowledge. And he, he said that, right? I don't. I'm, I'm making it up. <laughs> they say that, right? So, how to protect that one? Yeah. The, see, Quran has everything in it, but we don't read. We are, we are left for some scholars, you know, they're nonsense. They're crazy, they are against, they have enmity and jealousy against Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his family and his companions, you know. And they are eating in this world nothing but fire, and they'll be in fire. So, how to protect him? There's Surah, uh, someone took, take it out, uh, verse, uh, chapter number 3, verse 49. He says, you know, you know, Isa alayhi salam, one of the miracles in that verse which is given there, that any person came from anywhere, then Isa alayhi salam will tell him that you ate this, and you ate, he left this in your house. and he used to tell them what you ate in your house and what you left in your house. Whether he came from 50 miles, 20 miles, 100 miles, he will tell them. How many wars were there? And he is telling the people what you ate and what you left, going through all these walls, you know. And this Prophet Wasallam did not know what was on the other side. Who is Isa Islam? He is also a slave of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. He is looting and off Prophet Wasallam. So what can you say? He did not know. And what has happened to this? Sometimes I look, uh, feel like, like taking, uh, taking a sledgehammer and break their heads, you know. Boom! Crush! The, the, the fight come out. You know. the, 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 that fight ha, has no nerve for intelligence anymore. They are, all the nerves are dead, only the fight is left there, you know. That's it. So, uh, uh, so I got all the answers, you know, but... Uh, uh, what I want, you know, and I've been telling all along, whatever I know, and I learned from my teacher, you know, and I'm on the, on the world of uh, leaving this world uh, according to age, you know. But I don't know who will live first here, you know. But according to age, I'm in line. And I want it to pass to, I want it, you know, at least 10 people or something, maybe once a week or something, cl have class, and I tell you these kind of things, you know which are hidden in the Quran, you know, like uh, one verse, you know, they use, uh, uh, let me talk a minute ago on that, too, like, Abba uh, Sabata Walla, the Nabina came, Umm Maktoum came, he was blind, you know, 
uh, okay. uh, he came and Prophet then turned his face and puffed his cheek and turned his face on the other side. What is this? The from, from Rahmatullah Alameen. It is a great sin. If he, if he did that, you cannot protect him. But did he really do that? No. It was Umayya bin Khalaf who did that, who was sitting there. And, you know, they tell, don't, don't, if I, if I say that, then they, what they say to me, you know, you are Shia. Just to protect my prophet, Shia. I mean, he said, Abaha wa tawalla. He puffed his cheek and turned away his face. Allah is not saying you. No, he said he. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so mad? are so kind of angry with Prophet that he is telling the creation of Allah which is going to come till Qayama about his Prophet that he did this. Is he going to expose him like this? Tell me. So read Surah number 74 Al Mudassir Abba Sahab Basar, the same person is the first same person, the word is Abasa. Baba for almost the same meaning, both of them. And then read Surah Noon, Surah number, according to Tartil, Surah number 2. Is that Noon? Kalam, Noon or Kalam, yeah. Ten of the bad or evil habits. Or ten, you can say the curses of Allah are, are told in that surah about that man, uh, Walid bin Mughara. So it is Walid bin Mughara. He turned, you know, he turned his face. It was his habit, which is mentioned in Surah Mudassir. Not the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Rahmatul Alameen. He used, he said, I'm, I was born, I'm born among the poor. And I will stay with poor, and I will rise in Hashar in with poor, you know. So he is staying with poor all the time. Now is he going to turn the face away? So, but if, even if it happens, it's Sunni Bahai, you know. No, no, no. This is Kasir Rabayat. It is for Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No, Zali. How come, you, how dare you can put that on Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He is, you know, he is the one who takes the people down, downtrodden, or, and take, take them up and put, put, him, put them on, the, on his chest. Now, let's see one glimpse of uh, like uh, uh, the Abu, you know Abu Lahab? His uh, wife's name was uh, Abu uh, was that Jamil, Bint Jamil. Yeah. Beautiful lady, and he was also beautiful. That's the call Lahab. Means like fire, his chair, his was so reddish face that that is why that why his name is Abu Lahab. Okay. Now she came one time with a rock, and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was standing with Abu Bakr Siddiq. They were talking, and she came making a noise. You know, where is that you know, wretched one? So I'll break his head with this stone. Prophet is standing there, she is standing here, Abu Bakr is asking you, where is your come, where is the, uh, your prophet? I want to crush her, crush his head. Uh, Abu Bakr said this, he was kind of, he was kind of raised, you know, and he wanted to hit her, you know, but Prophet uh, hold her hand, hold his hand and said, no, no, stop, stop. So, she could not see. She's standing in front of each other. This is the rule. This is the rule. So I'm just, so may Allah give us means and tawfiq to learn Quran, understand, and my saying is this, at this age, you know, if you, don't, if you have any doubts in your aqidah anywhere, please make it clear. Hello? Because shaitan at the last moment, 
will put doubts in your mind and then we might leave this world without faith. He, can, he will take it away right away because you are in doubt about certain things. So whatever you believe, whatever I believe, it should be clear, you know. Allah says in the first verse of the Quran, Alif Lam Mim, Zalik Al Kitab Al Arab Fi, Kudalil Bud Taqil, Allah Zina Yuminana Bil Ghaib. Allah Zina Yuminana Bil Ghaib. Wa Akhir Wa La Akhir. Say. Say that I can't pronounce it. ها <تصفيق> ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه مدل المتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاه ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما انزل اليك وما انزل من قبلك وفي الاخره هم يوقنون. اول مفارد هو اللي قلت له وبالاخره يوقنون يقين ايمان ان يقين Iman, okay, Allah has, Allah, this, Allah, we know, angels, we know those. But we, with the hereafter, they, are, they have certainty. So are you certain that there is a hereafter? If you are, Alhamdulillah. The, if you have that certainty, all the time you, you will worry about the hereafter. All the time you will worry about, so if you don't have, then thank you, thank you. This way, that way, this way, that way. What is this? Be sure, you know. Have certainty. Alhamdulillah, you know, from 1960, I've been, as I said, I've been saying this all along. I've been working on the certainty part now. I'm not a worship. I'm not a scholar. I'm not a worshiper. But whatever I believe, I'm certain about it. And may Allah, uh, I thank Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to give me a teacher like this who created that kind of thing in my heart, you know. So, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa ala Muhammadin wa ala Sayyidina wa ala Muhammadin wa ala Sayyidina wa ala I said to thee, make them uh, understand if it's something wrong, please uh, uh, take it out from their brains, you know, and please forgive me. Thank you. Salaam, brother. Salaam. Salam, inshallah. Salam,
ولا لسيدنا ولا محمد وعلي وسلم اللهم انت السلام انت السلام عليك يا رب السلام وحينا ربنا بالسلام وقنا دار السلام تبارك ربنا وتعالى يا ذا الجلال والاكرام ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار رب اجعلني من خير الصلاة وذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب يا رب يا رب اسمار جاترين يا رب يا رب ंग increase the ranks in your, in your court, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, make his life kind of an example for us, Ya Allah. Today, Yazidis are all around us, you know. Allah, he was means and tawfiq to have the kind of strength and life like the Imam Hussain al-Islam, the son of the, the great warrior Imam Ali, radiyallahu ta'ala, no, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, whatever you know, we did, Allah, if there are any merits, you know, we, 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 you know, we give the, you know, we present this merit in the court of Imam Hussain al-Islam. Ya Allah, please accept it, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, present it to the court of Bibi Fatma, Salamullah alayha. Ya Allah, accept it, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we present it in the court of Imam Ali, alayhi salam. Ya Allah, we present it in the court of the, the, the leader of the whole universe. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam our beloved prophet ya allah ya allah re la re the ranks of all these ya allah ya allah ya allah to you are great you know ya allah please bless us with the life a uh, uh, righteous life you know and the children who are uh, being raised here in our ya sino allah make it easy for us here to be the good muslim you know who will follow the, the example of imam hussain al islam ya allah ya allah give us means and tawfiq to stand up and fight all these yazidi yazidi in ya allah ya allah we are great and uh, make this islam victorious throughout the world ya allah ya allah give the honor and dignity your deen you know and ya allah please curse the enemies of islam ya allah give us means and tawfiq to stand uh, against the enemies of islam ya allah you are great without, without your help you know we can do nothing ya allah ya allah help us ya allah ya allah help us to you know, live a life which is kind of in line with prophet muhammad sallam life and his companions and his family ya allah ya allah raise their ranks you know. ya allah give us means and tawfiq to to live a life when the prophet sallam will become our intercessor on the day of judgment ya allah ya allah give us means and tawfiq to drink from his hand on the holy cross ya allah ya allah give us means and tawfiq ya allah so we get the help of prophet muhammad sallam when we call when we are crossing the bridge you know, of the of sirat ya allah ya allah give us means and tawfiq to protect I want to protect our families and children from the nonsense and the fahashi of this world, you know, throughout the world. You know, it's not only here now; it's everywhere. Uh, that we are, we are surrounded by the fire of uh, of lunatics and uh, the indecency and uh, all kind of corruption. Ya Allah, please save us from that fire, you know, and Ya Allah, and save us from the fire of the hereafter. صلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه محمد وعلي وصحبه من دعا Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah 
اشهر ولا اله الا الله اشهر ان محمد رسول الله 